Guys, welcome to the family discipleship webinar that we are putting on with Katie J. Trent. I am Brooke Poston. I am the owner and creator of Homeschool Resource Co. I'm also the blogger behind thefervenmama.com. We are here to talk about the three misconceptions of family discipleship and how you can overcome them. Um, just as a reminder, this webinar is put together by us. We will be doing the gospel collection. Um, the preview collection starts next week where you can get five freebies. Um, they are actually paid products worth about $50 that you can get for free for three days only. I'm going to put as soon as I finish talking because I can only do one thing at a time. I'm going to put that link up for you in just a second. But I wanted to let you know that that's going on, which is why we're talking about family discipleship and we're getting you ready to um, engage in that journey with your kids about teaching them about Christ and just having fun along the way. One thing I do want to remind you, I'm a homeschool mom, just like you. I have five kids. Four of them are currently outside jumping on the trampoline and wet and water and everything. So if I have uh, um, a spongy kid <laughs> come running through the background, I, I lock the door on them. But um, but don't tell anybody else that I did that. Uh, the window's open, though, so I can still hear and see them. <laughs> don't worry. Um, but if I have a spongy kid come running through the background, just try to ignore it also have a baby who's asleep in the other room. So if I have to run out and you only see Katie on the screen, that's why I'm a mom just like you guys, hence my home in the background. <laughs> so let's get right into things. I'm going to shoot it over to Katie and let her introduce herself and um, we'll just get things started. Go for it. Hi, Katie. everybody. I am so glad to be here with you. I just love Brooke and everything they do at Homeschool Resource Co. So I'm honored to be back for another webinar. I am also a homeschool mama, though I only have two, um, and we are currently in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and we have a background in ministry for over 15 years. My husband's been a pastor and church planter. We've done missions and all sorts of things, and I also have a background in clinical mental health, so I've spent a number of years counseling children and families and the last five years I've been working on writing and digital courses and really equipping homeschool moms around the world to build strong faith-filled families. I almost forgot I muted myself. <laughs> um, Katie is an author. She has um, two books. One of them I have right here. I'll show you guys. I'm sure she has them too. Of course, one of them I see in the background. But um, I love Katie's book. And we actually gave a few away a couple months ago when we worked um, with her on fun uh, fa family faith building academy. For some reason, I think because you have the fundamentals of family discipleship in there, I keep wanting to say the fun family faith building academy. And so I'm putting too many F's in there and I get myself confused. But I love Katie's book. And um, she actually has a second book coming out, which we're going to talk about later. Um, but let's talk about your book really quickly, um, Dishing Up Devotions. Tell everybody why you created it and what's it about and how families can use it. Yeah, so Dishing Up Devotions, 36 Faith Building Activities for Homeschooling Families, was designed to help us grow as families and build biblical character together. And as Brooke mentioned, I'm all about fun. I feel like we miss so much when we get so focused in routines that we really miss the beauty of discipleship. And so this book combines all of my favorite things, baking and Jesus and fun and family. And so each week has got encouragement for mom and a fun devotion, just real life stories and situations, as well as a fun family activity that ties that character building trait together and helps you to look at what does it look like to live this out as a family? How do we grow in patience or, you know, leadership and that sort of thing? And then it has a delicious baking recipe that I use as an object lesson. So I have what I call a baking buddies, which is like a conversation connection to help your kids understand how God is active in our daily lives. And so it's just a way to connect as a family and grow in your faith. And it is so much fun. I love hearing from people all over the world about how they're building memories and growing their faith together. So it's available everywhere. Books are sold online and it is just an incredible resource for homeschool families. So um, Olivia has a question in the chat. I think you were asking about um, what the name of the book is. It's Dishing Up Devotions and you can find it pretty much anywhere books are sold, right? Yeah, and Amazon right now has it for like incredibly cheap. 
So they do that every once in a while. So stock up, they make incredible presents for like, I keep them on hand, you know, like, oh, somebody's got this and we've got Mother's Day coming up and we've got, you know, end of school year tutors or whatever. And so it's really just a great thing to bless people with. Yes. So let's kind of dive into family discipleship for, um, we'll, we'll give an overview. What is family discipleship to you and how would you explain it to other people? So family discipleship, I really feel like faith building is a journey. And so that's the way I look at it. And family faith building, I feel like when, when you're an individual, your walk is personal, right? It's you and the Lord and you're growing. But when you're married and you have kids, it becomes a family discipleship journey. You can no longer separate yourself out from your kids. And so it's this beautiful coming together of how do we all grow more like Jesus and help the world to experience him in our everyday lives. And so we grow and they grow. And it's just a beautiful way that God uses to help us understand who he is and how much he loves us. I feel like when I became a parent and Brooke, I don't know about you, but I feel like I thought I understood God's love for me. And then I became a parent and it, it wrecked me. I was like, how yeah. is it possible that I love this little person so much? I would do anything for them. And when you start to filter what you think you know about God through that lens, it changes mm -hmm. everything. Because I started asking myself, would a loving father do this? No. Okay. That's not truth. You know, and really it shaped my worldview when I became a parent. So Right. And I completely agree. Um, parenting is a walk of, uh, it, it, it takes you on a journey is the only way that I know how to explain it. You learn so much more about yourself and as Christians, we learn so much more about God and about his love and his patience and his long suffering and his kindness. You know, we really learn his character through parenting, because that is a lot of what God does with us as parent. You know, it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's a humbling experience. Absolutely. So let's say um, there are three common misconceptions of family discipleship that me and you have talked about. Uh, the first one you said is that our uh, a husband has to lead it or the man of your house or, or whatever that is. But I, and I'm going to let you talk about that for a second. But one thing that I did want to mention is sometimes as parents, as mothers, we feel like we may not have the tools that we need to do that. So while um, it, I sent out an email to our list earlier talking about the webinar and I began to think about, you know, how how we are equipped or how who are we to, to be telling people these things, you know? And I said, well, I'm a pastor's wife and I'm a former Sunday school teacher. And, you know, I disciple my own five kids and I, all of these things. And you have a lot of the same walk too. You know, your husband was a pastor, you've led in ministry, all of these things. But what about for families who don't have those backgrounds? What would you say to someone who says, I don't feel like I'm capable to do that? I would tell you that God would not have given you your children if he didn't feel like you were capable of doing it. And of course, we all know, like, we're not capable in our own, right? Like, this is something right. that is a partnership with God. But when we come together with God, and we lean on him, then he gives us everything we need to walk this out and to guide us. And it helps me as well to know, God loves my children so much more than I possibly could even fathom. And so I, and I don't do this well all the time, but I have to trust him as I walk this out and know that my mistakes are not bigger than my God. So it doesn't matter how badly I mess this up because I mess things up a lot. God is faithful, you know, and the Bible tells us in second Corinthians 12, nine, that his grace is sufficient for us right. and that his power is made perfect in our weakness. And so our weakness and his strength is all that we need in order to disciple our kids. We don't need a theology degree. We don't need a title. We don't need to be a male. We don't need anything else. God has specifically designed mothers to teach and nurture and guide our children. Right. So let's talk about that um, even further. One of, one of those misconceptions, like I mentioned, is that a husband has to lead it or the father has to lead it. What do you say about that? And how do you encourage mothers to take an active role in discipling children? 
Yeah, and this is such a deep question. There's so many things that I feel like we need to cover because, you know, like a two word answer doesn't really solve this problem. So first off, let's say whether, you know, it's obviously different if you're single, if you're diver divorced and trying to co-parent or if you're married and then within marriage, you know, it's affected by whether you and your spouse are on the same page and, you know, walking together in this journey whether you're at different places in your spiritual walk that creates contention or whether he's an unbeliever. And so each one of those is a little bit different and we can dive more into those. But I think recognizing that if you're married, we'll just start there. So if you're married and your husband is a believer, you know, the Bible tells us that he's the spiritual head of the household, but that doesn't mean that that puts all the responsibility on him. And I think sometimes we can almost use that as a cop out, like, oh, well, it's on him. Or I just, you know, I see a lot of women struggle with, well, I just want my husband to lead and I'm trying to shove this Bible in his face and, you know, tell him to read it to our kids or to read this devotional, you know, or we're trying to get them to lead it. But really we don't recognize that God has created us naturally as teachers and naturally as nurturers. And so we want to partner with our husband. And I know for me, I'll just use our family as an example, even though my husband's a pastor, you know, and he's very, you know, he's very passionate about his walk with the Lord. He doesn't like to read, you know, so and he doesn't just naturally think like, hey, this is a teachable moment or, hey, we can disciple our kids or, hey, we should, you know, sit down and do this. He's much more active and different in right. the way that he leads. And so I'm usually the one who says, hey, you know, why don't we gather and do this or what do you think about doing that? And like I'm the one who would read a devotion, he'll sit there and he has great questions that will engage, but it's not him doing it. And we've actually talked about this at length. In fact, even before I was like, what would you say? And, you know, how would you, how would you navigate that for the woman who's like, well, it has to be this way. And so I don't know what your thoughts are, Brooke, but I know for me, just recognizing that we, God has given us each unique individual strengths as well. And so when we work together as a team, that's really where we're most effective in family discipleship. Right. I completely agree. And it's funny because my husband is the same way. He pastors and we, he was a youth pastor before and, you know, all of these things, but he doesn't like to read. I, I buy audio books and I'm like, listen to it while I read it, please. Like, let's have a conversation. And he's just not that person. He will sit and listen to preachers preach all day, but he will not <laughs> read a book or listen to a book. So, uh, so my husband is the same way, but I've learned, which it's it, my thoughts are going to bring us to the next point, but I've learned that, um, we, because we homeschool, we have so much tied into discipleship that we don't actually realize is discipleship. You know, when we talk about worldview or when we bring in a Christian education or when we actively live out our faith in front of our kids and all of these things, that is discipleship. It is not always just sitting at a table and doing these things and reading a devotion or, you know, when we stop and take those little moments of, well, you weren't nice to your brother when you said this, and this is what the Bible says about that. That is discipleship. You know, sometimes we, we have this preconceived notion of what it means to disciple or what it means to do these things, uh, we forget what those little moments actually mean. And somehow, sometimes they can be so much more powerful than taking the time to, to do those individual sitting down and we're going to do this together as a family. Um, so I, I think that when we realize that everything, our, our whole lives consist of discipleship, then we can uh, attack it with a method of how much easier it is. I'm going to hop off screen for just a second. I'm sure you hear my baby crying <laughs> and my dog just went in too. So it's getting louder. Yes, you're good. And Brick brings up such a great point. That is our second point is that discipleship doesn't only happen during dedicated times. And I would venture to say that the most effective discipleship happens when we take the time in those moments, those teachable moments to really connect with our kids, to really help them to make that connection between the Bible and the things that they're learning and what they're experiencing in their life. And that is, I feel like what so much of the church actually misses. It's why we see the statistics of so many kids who leave the faith when they're adults, because they got the Sunday school, they got, you know, we've got to pray and we've got to read the Bible and we've got to check, check, check. But when parents don't take the time to look for those daily discipleship moments, they miss out on 
building the most solid foundation that they can for their kids. Because if my kids are living out their faith daily, if they're seeing me live out my faith, if I'm taking the time to help them make those connection points and build memories and see God move in their lives and the lives of those around them, then those are the things that they're going to stand on when the world starts to try to push back, when they start to fight and they wonder, you know, is this real? They won't have to question that because they have those connections. And so discipleship literally can happen throughout the day and should be happening throughout the day. And it doesn't take a theology degree. It doesn't take, you know, and a strong knowledge even of the Bible. Like if you are walking with the Lord and you are taking time to study his word and to pray and to seek his wisdom and to grow, he will always give you something to share. Like I'm not the smartest person in the world. I'm not the most creative or the funnest person in the world. The connections that I share and the resources that I build for moms are from my own daily walk with the Lord. Most of it is not even from my husband. Like it's literally just, I'm spending time with Jesus. And as I do, he's showing me these things that make those connection points. And when you start to look at the world through that lens of God is everywhere and everything, and he is teaching us something in every moment, then that discipleship will start to come so much more naturally when you just start to ask questions and pause and wonder and help to say, okay, this is the struggle. What's the solution? Because the Bible has a solution for every problem we face. So when you live your life that way, that discipleship naturally happens. Yeah, I think you brought up a good point of uh, being active in our children's lives and the things that they're going through and just taking those little moments and like I said, making them teachable moments or, for example, um, my kids, every night we pray together um, individually as I put them to bed and they were just repeating these same prayers every night, you know, and I would tell them, you know, pray from your heart or pray for this or pray for that. And I realized that they, you know, as much as they hear mama pray and they see mama worship and all of these things that they weren't sure how to do it. And so we, I use that as a teachable moment. And I did a study myself on prayer and the Lord's prayer and what it meant to pray and, and the, the building blocks of prayer. And then I did that with them alongside them. So they've been learning how to pray. And I've watched even their little prayers at night before they go to bed, how they've expanded and how I don't have to lead them anymore. And, and, you know, they thank God and they worship God and then they repent for their sins or they say, help me with this that I'm struggling with. And, and then they pray for our community and they pray for our family and all of these things. So when we just say, you know, we don't know where to start, you know, even as pastors, wives or, or uh, authors or wherever, you know, we may be, we don't know, we don't have all the answers. We've got to study it out and we've got to understand and we've got to look to God for his word and his knowledge and how he would have us to disciple those kids. So, um, Olivia, you asked a very important question in the chat about the study on prayer and, um, it may or may not be a part of the gospel collection. It is a study that I wrote myself. <laughs> I wrote it myself and then I created a kid's version that I did alongside my kids. And so it is a special offer that will be with the gospel collection. It has not yet been released. So um, it, it'll I be- I can't wait for it. <laughs> I know, I'm so excited about it too. FYI, I don't know how much information we've put out there just yet, but it is 36 products from multiple different bloggers and brands and people and families. And it's 95% off. I'm not going to tell you how much it is, but it's 95% off. And it's going to be a great resource. It's, it's amazing. So anyways, um, on to we, we, when we just really depend on God and we trust him to lead us and guide us in his knowledge and in his way, you know, sometimes our kids are going through things that we don't have the answers for, but we can study those things out because God gives us that roadmap of his word to be able to understand and to be able to help them. So uh, I, I think that's so important to be active in your kids' lives and to understand that every moment can be discipleship, which brings us to our second point of discipleship only happens at certain times. Um, I, I think that, you know, it, it really ties in with the third point because as homeschoolers, we, a lot of times we want to add Bible to our regular rotation, which is great. I don't, I don't have a problem with that, but I've learned that when I take time to do it outside of our school, 
we we don't we did for a while have a regular um bible curriculum that we used in our homeschool but it didn't always touch on the things that my kids were going through at the time and while we were learning and they were they have, were having a knowledge when when i would touch on those things that were active in their own lives and touch their own hearts they had more than a head knowledge but they had a heart knowledge as well so let's talk about we'll kind of tie those in together because i'm not sure how much you talked about while i was gone so um about discipleship only happening at dedicated times and how you don't always need a curriculum or a, um, a Sunday school book or anything like that to make discipleship work for your family. Yeah, I think you brought up such a great point that we've got to recognize that in order for the Bible to really be effective, it's got to be more than just a course that we're taking. It's got to be more than just schoolwork. It's really got to, they've got to see it as the answer to their problems. And so when we take the time to make it meaningful for them, that's where, again, those connections happen. That's where they thrive in their own faith walk. And you get to see that. And there's so much within the Bible itself. I mean, you can do, no matter the age of your kids, you can do scripture memorization. Like when my kids were first learning letters, they would copy out scriptures, you know? So I would print them on a big paper and they would copy the letters, you know? So memorization, copy work, I mean, journaling, is a big part to see like what their little hearts are feeling and thinking and how they're to understand how our kids are analyzing and interpreting scripture is truly a window into their souls. And so when we take the time to just simply help them to see, you know, we read a passage of scripture, one verse, maybe, you know, even with littles and what does this mean? You know, how does it make you feel? How can you apply it to your life? When we just take a few minutes and utilize the scriptures in those ways, teach them how to study the Bible, you know, teach them how to turn scriptures into prayers and then how to make the Bible come alive. I mean, there's so many fun ways that we make the Bible come alive. You know, our kids will draw it, they'll color it, they'll create comic strips of it. We'll take chalk and go out on the driveways and, you know, draw out the scripture or write out the scripture that way. We'll, you know, make poems or turn it into skits, you know, use their toys depending mm -hmm. on their age. I mean, there's so many ways to help engage your kids with the Bible that you really don't need a curriculum. And if you have a curriculum, that's great. I'm not, there are some wonderful curriculums, but like you, Brooke, I've just found that we seem to get so much more when we're just using it. The Bible is alive and active, right? And so right. It, it reads us. It's the only book that can read us. And because of that, it's the most effective tool that we have to disciple our kids. And we want it to be that discipleship and not just another task that we complete each day. Right. I, um, I, the Lord's really been impressing on me in prayer lately about how the Bible is that lamp unto our feet and, and light unto our path. And, you know, I was thinking about how um, if you look at it in biblical times, there was no electricity. When it was dark, it was dark. And, you know, we live in a very dark hour in a very hour, uh, an hour where it seems like is just consuming us as Christians and everywhere we look, you know, we can't even drive around in, um, in our city without seeing a billboard that my kids shouldn't see, you know, like it, you can't turn on the TV without hearing or seeing things that, that aren't fit for, for Christian eyes. Um, and especially with our kids. And, you know, we think sometimes, what do we do? You know, where do we turn? And, we think we need to have this big long answer, this big setup or this plan. And sometimes it's not that way. And so when you look at it and in the darkness and the Bible says his word is a lamp, that lamp just shows us a little bit ahead of us. You know, if you take a, a light and turn it on in the dark, um, just a small thing like an oil lamp or a match or anything, you can only see what's right in front of you. And when God says his word is that lamp into our feet, he's showing us that next step. He's saying, look, this is where we go. This is the next step you'll take. Trust me again, because you you don't know where that next step is going to be. You don't know if you're going to fall into a hole or, or go off track or anything. But if you use his word as I'm going to, uh, this is a lamp and I'm just going to take that next step. And that's what his word is, is he explains that for us. And he tells us which way to go. And he leads us down his path for righteousness sake. And, and I'm just so grateful that, you know, he gives us that knowledge to be able to to show our kids that, you know, and, and a lot of times we think that uh, we like I said, we have to have everything planned out and we we have to have all of these answers. But when we just serve God 
he lets us know all of those things. You know, I was reading again um, about how God tells us to bind those things about our necks or to set up these little memorials for his name's sake. Because when our kids grow up, they're going to say, hey, what, what was that for? And God, you can say, well, that's when God, you know, touched my body or that's when God did this for me or did that for me. And, and you know, we can use all these little moments as teachable things. And, and that's what discipleship really is. And so I'm, I'm just excited that that's one of the things that is on my heart um, for families and, and to help other people is in family discipleship, because you are, um, God gave you those children for a reason and you, you can do it. And he fully equips those he calls. He says the call of God is without repentance. And when he gave you those kids, they, um, they are yours and, and he fully equips you to complete that job. So kind of feel like I got off on a rabbit trail there, but <laughs> that's just my heart lately. You know, it's, it's just how good he is. No, I think that was right on track. That's exactly what we're talking about. And that's what we need to remember. I mean, the whole faith walk is about trust. It's not about um, checking boxes. It's not about just looking good or doing routines. It's really about saying, do I trust God? Do I know how to live my life in that daily faith walk? What areas am I trusting him in? What areas am I struggling? And when we walk alongside our kids and they see our struggles, they see us growing, they see us repenting, they see us asking for forgiveness, they see that we're not perfect and we're not expecting perfection and neither is God. We are showing them the way and we're guiding them side by side and step by step on a journey that's going to take them throughout their lives. And so this is one of homeschooling's greatest blessings. It's why we homeschool, because we want that opportunity to be in those moments when our kids are away from us for an entire day. We There are so many things that happen that they have no way to process, no way to even remember to tell us happened. And so you have been given a gift, even though many times it does not look like a gift. It does not sound like a gift. It does not feel like a gift, right? Because it is a refining process and right. it stretches us and it brings, you know, all of those negative things within us to the surface. But it is the opportunity for us to grow, for that iron to sharpen iron and for God to prune us and for our kids to get to see that and us to see it in them. It is truly the greatest gift I think we can experience here on earth. Right. I completely agree. So let's, um, we talked about how you, you can use your life experiences, what's going on in your life, your kid's life to really hone in on how, um, how to disciple them in a way that affects their hearts and then just give them a head knowledge. So let's go a little bit more into curriculum. Um, I know that we both believe, and we both talked about uh, just now that we don't think that you have to have a full on curriculum to disciple your children. So what do you do? Do you use pieces? Do you just pray and ask God? Do you ask him to lead you? How do you um, physically put something in front of your kids or choose when sometimes you don't have all the answers? Well, I think you start with where you're at. You start with the Bible that you have. And like for us, like we taught our daughter to read using a beginner's Bible, right? And so like she was reading stories out of that and then we were reading out of our Bible. So you start with what you have and where each of your kids are at. And then you look at what they're struggling with and you surround yourself with resources. Absolutely. You know, like that's why the books that I design are set up so that if your child is struggling with patience and you're like, God, I don't even know what to do right now. You know, you grab Dishing Up Devotions, you open to the patience chapter, you read your encouragement for you, and then you do the family activity or the baking recipe or whatever, like you have a tool there. So you want to surround yourself with tools, like the prayer thing that Brooke was talking about. So I have tools at my ready. I just don't have, I don't believe that a specific curriculum is what you want to be your guide. We've had curriculums and every once in a while, they're great to pull out for something, but they just, I let the Holy Spirit lead me. And so we have those things, you know, in my new book, Recipes for a Sweet Child, was written to address like those 36 most common struggles that we have with our kids. So if your child's struggling with anger or sibling rivalry or bullying or, that you know, they're refusing to do their schoolwork, you've got, again, a resource that you can pull off your shelf and say, okay, I don't know what to do, Lord he's got something for you. And you've got a simple Bible lesson and a discussion guide. And you've got, again, a fun family activity, because I feel like 
if you haven't figured this out yet in the time that Brooke and I have been talking, relationship with your kids is key. The stronger your relationship with your children, the more effectively you're going to be able to disciple them. So relationship building is so important. You've got to make time to connect and make beautiful memories and build trust and rapport and cultivate meaningful conversations because the deeper you can go in conversation, the more God can move in those and the more your kids will grow and learn. And so my resources are designed to do just that, you know, so you have things like recipe for a sweet child where you can pull that off the shelf or, you know, a prayer journal or different things that you can incorporate in different seasons. You just don't want to let them become the master. You want to know that you're walking with the Lord and he is guiding you to the resources you need, but you're keeping the Bible at the center of everything that you're doing. Right. I love that. And that's what, really what we aim to do at Homeschool Resource Co. You know, um, we have we've had people email us and say, you know, are do you have a full curriculum? Is that something that you're looking at doing? And the answer is no. We want to be a resource center for you. We don't want to um, provide everything to you and say, here, here's this bundle and it might work for your family. But we want to give you resources from a number of different people perspectives, age ranges, you know, all of these things so that we can get, we can meet you where you are. And we want that to be completely affordable for every family. So and let me just say that that is for me, because when I started homeschooling, you know, I spent hours and hours and hours researching and pulling all the freebies and, you know, and just trying to collect all of these things. And you know what filled up my old computer? a bunch of those things that I never used. Yeah. And so having homeschool resource code just for our family personally has been such a blessing because I have curated things. I've got, okay, all my gospel collections here. If I'm looking for a resource, that's the first place I go. So having high quality products that you know can be trusted and that are of value for us personally has been incredible. And Brooke didn't know I was going to say that, but I I, I'm just all. telling you um, <laughs> that it is truly a gem and it is so important to be able to have those at your fingertips. Because when you're in a crisis, mama's hand raised, right? Like you're right. not thinking straight, right? You're angry, you're frustrated, you're flustered. You're like, I don't know what to do. And so to try and hunt down something in that moment is hard. But if you have things on hand, then it makes it so much easier for you to just slip right in and tackle that teachable moment right then and not put it off and end up, you know, not dealing with it. Yeah, I do want to mention because you you brought up something um, extremely important is about how, you know, as homeschoolers, sometimes we reach and we grab all of those freebies and everything and we don't know, you know, they end up just sitting there. Um, we do have a free resource on our website. Um, I'll try to grab the link in just a second when I get Katie to talk about her book in a second. But um, it is a free workbook where we tell you how to organize your resources so that you can fully and effectively use them in your homeschool. Um, this is not just resources that you get from Homeschool Resource Co. either. We do provide everything in a easy to download digital bundle for you. It's just a PDF and you go through and you click the resources. And But we also show you how to store them and how to um, use them using like a spreadsheet so that you know and how to uh, kind of organize it all in a, in a method that works for your family so that if you're in that crisis mode, you can go through and click those resources and find them and actually put them to use. So we don't want to just give you all of these resources that, you know, we're throwing this stuff at you and then we're like, use it, use it, use it. But we want to help you use it. You know, as homeschool families, that's really the heart of Homeschool Resource Co. I wanted to meet families where they were and give them actual um you know real things that they don't have to search hours on the internet for but they have them right there at their fingertips so i'll um, grab that link in a second but when you pre-order katie's book it is not released yet but when you pre-order it you get 85 dollars worth of bonus freebies if you click that um the little button at the bottom of your screen it'll take you to a separate page where you can learn about those freebies but katie if you want to tell them what they get then that would be great yeah, so I'm so excited. I've partnered with several of my blogging friends to give you just a variety of resources. So the first one is Foods from Around the World from Bonnie Rose, and it has all sorts of fun food-related resources because obviously baking is important to me. Hers are more savory and other things healthy too. But um, so you've got that in there. You've got Encourage My Tween Child's Heart from um, Tara Lee Felix. And she, you know, especially like our daughter's going into that now. Um, 
to be able to connect with your tween, I think is so important. So being able to have that is incredible. And then Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child has provided some amazing prayer and verse resources um, that are so much fun. And then my family faith building bundle is in there, which is 140 pages of fun, meaningful, memorable resources like Grow Your Faith Bingo and Bible charades and things that go along with Dishing Up Devotions, homeschool resources. I mean, so many different things that are there to just help you grow your faith as a family. Um, did I, I might've forgot one. Maybe I got them all. Um, oh, no. And then Jessica Anderson has a beautiful, I can encourage mama's heart. I'm sorry. Um, I'm picturing it. It's pink and it's beautiful, but it is a beautiful journal as well. And um, so they're all in there. You get that because I don't know about you, but I have a hard time waiting. So when you tell me that I'm not going to get my book until August 8th, it's hard to wait, but I promise it's worth the wait. You can go through Dishing Up Devotions now and it'll keep you, but also these resources will keep you busy and these next few months will fly by. And then suddenly before the school year starts, you'll have recipes for a sweet child and you'll be so happy. So please go and pre-order. It helps us to make sure we have enough books printed. When Dish Camp Devotions was released, we actually ran out almost. And so the printer was behind and it took us a long time to be able to get more books. So by pre-ordering, we know how many we can guesstimate better and make sure we have enough books for everybody. So pre-order, get Are those bundles. Ordering? They're only good till August 8th. So you don't want to be in that predicament, but it's also good, you know, that you ran out. I know it was such a blessing and it helped me, you know, I'm contracted for two more books. So I'm doing this one and then I have an Advent devotional that's releasing for 2024 that I'm really excited about and in the process of writing right now. Um, one other thing that uh, Katie has that we'll talk about really quickly is the Common Mistakes of Discipleship Masterclass. Um, we actually promoted this a uh, couple, I guess about a month or so ago in January. And, yeah. And, um, and it is a great resource in this masterclass. It is live, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so talk about the masterclass for a second. It is completely free and it is live just like this event, except Katie's doing it for her uh, family faith building Academy. Yeah, so this really tackles those most common mistakes. We talked about misconceptions today, but these are mistakes that I see almost every parent make when they're discipling their kid. And so I'm telling you what they are and what to do instead so that you can more effectively disciple your kids. And then for being part of the live masterclass, I have a free gift and I have an incredible offer for those who attend live, it's, I'll just tell you because I'm not telling anyone else, but it's my Baking Jesus Famous. It's a live interactive character building baking workshop that we do virtually. Um, and kids love it. Parents love it. It's incredible. And I only offer it um, through these master classes. So you'll want to be there. We've got several different dates that you can sign up for. It's totally free. Um, you're on for about an hour and it's just an incredible time. You'll definitely be glad that you joined. So please sign up. I'd love to see you there. And that's coming up just in April. So what about a month, less than a month? Yeah. Right. So um, we're going to start wrapping up here. If you have any more questions, I invite you to ask them over in the chat. But there's a couple things that I wanted to talk about on Tuesday. We will have another webinar with me and another Katie, not this Katie, but Katie Wolf from the Wolf Pack will be joining me to talk about the gospel collection that is upcoming. And we'll do a complete walkthrough. We'll let you see it, what it looks like, how it works, um, what's inside. And the preview collection is live. Remember, that's those $50 in products that you can get for free for from Monday to Thursday, the 28th through the 30th. And then on the 31st, we have a brand new class that we have not, this is something we haven't done before and I'm so excited about. It is a kid's class. So think about it just like this with me and Katie, um, how we're talking to you as parents. We have Anne, uh, Anne Marie coming from Future Flying Saucers to give us a kid's class on why people do bad things using Adam and Eve. So be sure to sign up for that, get your kids uh, involved and it will be live. You can ask questions. You can follow along in an activity. There's a freebie. 
where you can download and that she'll be going through that as well. So that is super exciting. That's going to happen next Friday at 10 a.m. But you can sign up for it now on our website. Um, if you don't get that link, um, let me see if I can grab While it. While she's looking quick. for that, I'll just say my kids are so excited and Anne oh, is yes. amazing with her object lessons. I obviously I'm an object lesson gal. I love it. And I'm sure Brooke, you know, doing kids ministry, like we recognize it. We've got to take these big abstract concepts and make them concrete so that they connect with our kids. And so I'm really excited for this as well. It's going to be so much fun. There we go. Put it in the chat for you guys if you need it. Um, but go ahead and sign up for that because on that Friday as well, the gospel collection goes live, which is what we've been talking about, what everybody's so excited about. 36 products at 95% off of retail. And it is to help you disciple your kids, teach your kids about Christ. It's full of workbooks and courses and printables and freebies and studies for your kids and studies for mom. I think we have everything, everyone covered from pre-K to adult in there which is great. I love doing that. Um, so be ready for that next week. So we've got a lot going on over the next week, two weeks, um, the gospel preview, a webinar, a walkthrough, the gospel collection, all of that great stuff. Uh, if we don't have any more questions, I am going to wrap things up here with Katie. Katie, thank you for coming on with us again today. I love having you on. You're so easy to talk to and you're just a wealth of knowledge. For, for Christians and for parents, for moms especially, and encouragement. So thank you for joining us again today. And thank you everyone for coming. Um, this replay will be available. And if you have any questions at all about Katie's books or the, uh, something that she may have mentioned today, you can email her. Go to her website, katiejtrent.com. Send her an email. Ask her your questions. She will be more than happy to answer anything that you have and to help you along your journey as well. So Katie, did you have anything else to say before we wrap things up? Absolutely. I just say I'd love to help. And Brooke, it's always such a pleasure. I feel like we could probably talk for the rest of our lives and never run out <laughs> of things to say. So thank you everybody for being here with us. And we are praying for you and your homeschool journey. And we look forward to connecting with you soon.